Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the most interesting people and a man who's got a brand new book out. He spent four years writing it. The Spring of Casper Meyer is written by Ben Ferguson. He joins us on the phone right now. How are you? Very well, thank you very much. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good. And congratulations on this new book. It's not very often you get this much hype with a first book. People seem to like it. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very much enjoying it. It's, uh, I mean, obviously when you write the book, you don't... Uh, I mean, you hope to get it published, but you don't think you think about what's going to happen after it's after it's been published. And so it's uh, no, it's it's, uh, it's a very fun time at the moment. Some people rattle these out in a few weeks and then just throw it into the publisher. You spent a long time writing this. Tell us the story of it, written over four years, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, and so it was something I started writing in about two thousand and eight, um, and I. It was written, it was probably written about over about four years, but that's not obviously four years of just writing. That's lots of research, because uh, it's a historical novel. It's, it's set in Berlin, 1946, just after the war. Um, and then, then obviously the writing of the, the first draft probably took only about a year. But then after that, um, many extra years of uh, redrafting and re-editing and reworking it. Um, and I also have a full, I have had a full time job since I left university, so it's also squeezing it around that. So, um, yeah, about four years in end to end. I know you're interested in art. That, of course, is your big passion and what you've done for most of your life. Why this mm-hmm. book, though, and why this subject? Well, I lived in Berlin for about four years, although I'm now back in London. Um, and I was very inspired by the history of the city. And it's a city that is very marked by its past. It's still, there are still bullet holes in the walls. There are still uh, big sections of the, of the city that are just missing, either because of the Berlin Wall or because of, of the bombing uh, during the war. Um, and so you, you become very aware of this, um, you know, that the old people around you have this sort of experience, this sort of uh, major event. Um, but unlike in in the in the UK, where for me and I'm, I'm sure for you and, and lots of uh, British people, your grandparents talk a lot about what happened to them in the war. That you know you, you get you know almost too many war stories in Germany and in, in Berlin. You hear nothing about it because it's obviously a very sensitive subject. Um, so you you really hear so you hear very little about people's war experiences. And therefore, to a writer and the things that sort of not being said. Uh, is very fascinating. The heart of this story is that it's heartbreaking and it's a story of love and loss, really, isn't it? How hard is that to sort of put into words? It's easy to tell a story, um, especially if it's personal and make it heartfelt, but when it's somebody else's story, that must be tricky. You've done a great job of that. Was that easy or was that really the tough bit and the reason it took so long? Um, thank you, first of all. Um, yeah, I mean, it, that is the tough bit. I think, um, and I think that is something, you know, you, one does read uh, novels where, you know, the setting is very good or the plot's very good, but, but there isn't much of a sort of emotional pull. And, and for me, that always leaves me a bit cold. So I was, I was very keen that, you know, although it's an exciting book and a book with a plot, hopefully, um, it's at the heart of the book is the relationship between uh, Catherine Meyer, who's this uh, older fifty-year-old uh, black market trader, and, and Eva, who's this uh, much younger rubble woman. So their their friendship is, is very much the heart of the book. And I really it, the book opens. I don't give too much away with her blackmailing uh, him. And I was just really interested in the idea of this of, of how a friendship can develop from a very bad start. So yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a it was a big worry of mine of whether I could get that transition to work from them obviously being enemies in a sense to being becoming uh, friends um, and becoming uh, you know and that friendship helping them deal with what what had happened to them both uh, during the war and afterwards. Um, but yeah, so and, it, and that took and then that was what was being worked and then lots of the redraft was, was just of getting that right and, and getting it right in a, in a way that feels real and doesn't feel too sentimental. 
I don't know how you feel about it, Ben. We're exactly the same age. And for us and our generation, I think we see the war differently than our parents and certainly their parents who were involved in it. Um, for us, the mystique of it and the the stories that we read about it are so moving and so compelling. Is that initially where your interest came? I mean, we, we can't see it in a first hand. We didn't live through it and nor did we experience sort of the impact of it in terms of money and, and how people struggled. We've been very blessed, our generation, in a way, possibly too blessed, some would argue. Do you think that's why our generation are so interested now? Because we're sort of viewing it through different eyes. Yeah, I, I think there are two things. I think that's definitely part of it. I think, although we didn't grow up with it, and although we're, in a sense, you know, my parents weren't in the world, my grandparents were. But it's still very much a part of, um, you know, what it means to be British or what it means to be German. Um, it's still it's still very affected by by that war. You know, it, it, it's arguably still the biggest tragedy or the most important historical event that happened in in living memory. Um, so I think it I think it continues to be very important. Um, so uh, certainly for me, you know, both of my grandparents met during the war because of the war. So I like many people of my generation. Um, you know, I'm only here because of that war. And of course, that then, you know, also drives, um, you know, my, my interest in it. And the other, you know, the other reason that it, it, it's a perennial topic uh, for, for writing is it's, it's very dramatic and it, and it created lots of dramatic uh, contrasts. And, and because, and again, you know, the reason that, our, that my grandparents had lots of war stories is because it was a very dramatic time where life was very precious um, and all of the drama of our daily lives is, 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 was heightened in those, those very short years. I also wonder then why the youth of Germany aren't as fascinated by it as we are in the same way. It's interesting you say they're not talking about it like their parents didn't and certainly their parents' parents didn't. Is there no sort of sea of change there? Are they are they still sort of sweeping it under the carpet and not acknowledging it or talking about it? It's not the case that they sweep it under the carpet. It's the case that they are very, you know, and, and rightly so in many ways, very still feel a huge amount of uh, you still have a huge amount of concern and, and, and guilt about what happened in their name during the war. You know, the, again, you know, it's the, it's the biggest atrocities um, in human history. And so, but I do think what's happening, and in, in a sense this book is, is part of that, is, is looking at actually how, there are writers looking at how lives were lived after the war and during the war uh, in a slightly more complex way. Um, and uh, you do see films and, 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 and books that, that are starting to deal with that. But again, in terms of people's personal experiences, they didn't hear that. So my partner, for instance, is German, and, and that's the reason I moved to Germany, but his granddad had one arm, for instance. Um, and no one knew I had one arm. They knew it was something to do with the war, but it just wasn't discussed. And so he didn't grow up with anyone talking about the war. It was just... So it's, it's not necessarily that our generation in Germany aren't interested in, in the war, don't discuss the war, but it's just they were never, that was never shared with them uh, as a generation. That's fascinating. And let's move on to you, because what a, an achievement it is to get a book published. Everybody wants their own book released by a big company, and you've managed to achieve that. I know you're on your book tour at the moment. I mean, you've worked in art for many years. You've edited and you've published and you've sort of been around this sort of thing, but you've never done it under your own name. And to get taken up and to have such a big publisher behind you must be a great thrill. It's a huge thrill, yeah. I mean, I, I remember a few years ago, sort of when I was writing the book, thinking about where I'd like it to go and thinking, you know, the main thing that's important to me is to get it, just get it published by someone. And I wasn't particularly thinking about a big publisher and it's been sold in a few other countries and I absolutely wasn't thinking about translations and things like that. So, it, yeah, and it's been, it's been wonderful the last couple of years and, and slightly sort of dreamlike. Um, so, it, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's hugely exciting. It's, it's something I wanted to do since I was a little kid. Um, and there's something very special about 
uh, something you work hard for, you know, coming true. And I do think, in terms of other, you know, other writers, uh, other people thinking about writing or, or wanting to get published, I, I think there's a huge amount to be said for perseverance. You know, I think the reason it's happening now, I mean, I've, I've been writing, trying to write books or writing stories and writing different things for about, you know, for well over 10 years. Um, and when I was at university, I studied English and a lot of other people were also writing and, and now are not. And, and the difference really is that, that I was one of the few who stuck with it, you know. So I think, I think that's, the, that's the message. That's, the, that's definitely how you, how you get there, it's just, it's just sticking with it. So how much is it luck in getting published and how much is it perseverance and how much is it talent? What's that ratio then? I've tried to work it out because when I do these interviews, it seems like if you're Katie Price, you're never going to have a problem having your 14th autobiography published. But if you're somebody with a great novel, it's much, much more difficult, isn't it? It is more difficult, although I do think having a great novel gets you most of the way there. If you, I remember having a chat to my agent about this, about... You know that, that you hear these statistics. That their, their agency, they get a, she will receive about 100 manuscripts a week, um, and how you know, and, and one has this feeling of like if they're taking on three clients a year, how do you possibly compete? But she chatting to her about it. She said that 99 percent of those books are, are not very good books, um, <laughs> and so so I think if you're you have to write a good book first, and, and you have to finish a book. I mean, she also gets lots of things that aren't finished. So writing and finishing a good book is will we'll get you half the way there, I think. Congratulations on this new book. It's out now. It's called The Spring of Casper Meyer. It's by Ben Ferguson. It's in your stores now, and it's very moving, and it's very thrilling, and it's got a great heart to it. Congratulations, and thanks for talking to me, Ben. Uh, thank you so much for having me.